This is Karen with NewClevelandRadio.net, and it is time for Avoid the Maze. The music you're hearing in the background is from Jeff Brisbane. It's called Enough. I wish you enough. And I just particularly want to wish everyone enough as we go into the year 2023. Because we all look at January 1st of each year, hey, I'm going to make all these changes in my life. And the reality is, do we have to make all these changes? Do we have to make any changes at all? And Zach, when I read your bio, um, it's almost like you've been able to pinpoint what people really want to do. Um, Mm -hmm. And sometimes it doesn't mean this big dream of a picture. It means taking one step at a time. Am I correct? Oh, that's well said, Karen. Yeah, it's been a really fun journey. And you're right. Everybody has that thing inside them that's asking the question, is this it? And what does more look like for me? And I think it's a, a challenging and often misunderstood question. So I'm excited to dig into it with you today. Well, and as I've gotten older, I've always wondered, <clears throat> why did I always seek to have more? Why wasn't I appreciating what I had at the time, which is where I am today in my life? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, my, my husband is still a dreamer, and he keeps saying those what ifs. Well, what if I had done this? Where would I be today? And it's like, it doesn't matter. You didn't do it, and this is where you are today. So look around you, find something that makes you say, hey, I accomplished something, even if it means just getting up in the morning and taking your shower. Mm. But what is it that you tell career-minded individuals who really feel like they've got to throw everything away and start fresh? Sure. Well, I think it's good context, Karen. You mentioned career-minded. And my my work is focused on engineering and technology professionals who are hungry for what the world would may consider success, and right. they're seeking to solve this for themselves. But this conversation is for everyone. It doesn't matter if you're an engineer or not. We all ask the same question. And I think it's important, Karen, before we put, you know, hey, here's what we do and here's how we make progress to put a really uh, necessary paradox in front of ourselves and recognize that we tend to fall on one side or the other, but both are true. On one side is what you said first. And I think stereotypically when we're younger, we fall on this side of the coin. It's that go-getter achievement side of life, that the purpose of life is to go and grow and get more and reach my highest potential and keep stretching and keep learning and this idea that if i'm not moving forward if i'm not achieving something then i'm not doing whatever it is i'm supposed to do in the world and and i call that the the science of achievement but then on the other side is that peaceful reality of the present that spirit of gratitude and fulfillment that karen the truth is you know you and i right now today could easily sit here and just shower the whole hour of our time with blessings about how good we have it. And we don't need anything more in our life than what we have to be happy, to find a place of peace and joy. And we can get grounded in that right now in a place of deep fulfillment. And that's the the art of fulfillment in life. And it's easy to look at these two as contradictory, you know, well, which is true. Is it true that I can be happy now with nothing more? Or is it true that I need to get something else, you know, a bigger paycheck or a promotion or move to a new warmer climate, whatever that may be, to achieve what I want in life? And I believe this is just a paradox of life that both are true. It's not that one or the other is right or wrong. We all have both sides and they're both woven into the fabric of our being. And I think understanding that first is really important so we don't get caught up in, oh, I need to stop being happy now in pursuit of something new. Or, um, hey, I, I 
I don't want to pursue anything new so that I can be happy now. It, it's, it's not that conversation. Does that resonate for you, Karen? Oh, it certainly does. When I was in corporate America, um, I loved my job. I did not like the culture. Sure. And I fought the culture because I loved my students. I wanted to be with them. I wanted to help them. And for those that I knew I couldn't help, I wanted to be honest and let them know this isn't the place for you. Um, but what happened for me was the last year um, on Fridays, we had to go around the room and tell everybody something that really made us feel good. And I was dumbfounded by then. I was working so hard mm. at trying to ignore the culture of doing what I was doing. I was burning myself out. Sure. And I kept thinking, if I can go into this meeting on Friday and come up with one really exciting thing, I've made it. And by the time they'd call on me on Friday, I was like, I was beaten up. But I was doing the beating up. Mm. And it wasn't until I left corporate America when I said, <clears throat> you know what? There is something good that's happening right now. You may not think I'm successful, but the fact that I've done this, I'm successful at the moment. Mm. And I yeah. think that's what a lot of people need to understand. It's not how everybody else judges us. We have to judge ourselves mm. and we have to realize that nothing is perfect in life. And I'm sure you have found that out, you know, as you've been doing this as well, that, hey, I've got this great idea. Oh, this is going to be perfect. Yeah, still needs some tweaking. Yeah, yeah. I, I haven't found perfection yet, Karen. I'll let you know when I get there. But um, I would appreciate yeah. that. <laughs> To your point, you know, the way that I uh, describe this idea of reaching the next level and expansion and growth in life, we, we use the idea of lifestyle engineering. So I mentioned earlier that I come from an engineering background and I work with leaders in engineering and technology. And, you know, I'm a mechanical engineer by degree, but I'm a lifestyle engineer through the school of hard knocks, through the school of life lessons. And and we think about this in three different uh, three different buckets or three levels. And the, the foundation of the blueprint, this lifestyle engineering blueprint, is our mindset. We want to make sure that we're thinking in the best way, thinking in the right way that allows us to expand and grow. There's a lot we could unpack there. On top of our mindset, then, are, are the strategies, the tools, the skill sets, all of the actual abilities that we need to achieve the things that we want. And there are you know, real gaps in our knowledge sometimes or gaps in our network sometimes or or gaps in our discipline and ability to be productive at times. And so we need to master those things. And then what ties it all together, the, the roof of this, if you want to think about a, a little picture of a house, you know, your foundation is your mindset and the walls or the pillars of this are these strategies and tools that build up the home. But the roof, what ties it all together is what we call the playbook. And it's essentially taking action, Karen. <laughs> we can think about this and learn about this and talk about this all day long. And, you know, a great podcast like Avoid the Maze, it's just, it's so good to get the, the information. But Karen, the information is worthless without action, without implementation. And so that's what we focus on with our clients is to say, look, what are we doing with all of what you know? If you want to move forward, we need to take action. And, and that's the, the blueprint that we use to help people say, well, where are we stuck? Are we stuck in our mindset? Is that where we need to do the work? Are you stuck because you're lacking a skill set? In which case, let's go acquire that knowledge or get the practice that you need to move forward. Or is it action? Maybe there's some fear or some procrastination, which is just another form of fear in our lives that holds us back. And we need to push ourselves and, and have that coach come alongside and blow the whistle and say, let's let's go. It's time to get uh, get moving, take some action. And, you know, I like the sports analogy. Number one, uh, my youngest son is a 
sports freak, so um, I don't always retain what he shares with me. But every once in a while, it will like the light bulb will go off. Sure. And um, I was comparing what you were saying to last night's big football game. Here you have Georgia State that everybody knew was going to win. Um, and why? There's a lot of confidence, okay? And there is structure. And then here's TCU, who was really Cinderella going to the ball. How did they even mm. get there? Um, but as I was watching the game, I saw a different game, how TCU played than the last game. And there was a little lack of confidence, okay? But both coaches on each side of the field had that playbook. Mm -hmm. And everybody mm -hmm. on that field knew what was in that playbook. And they knew what they were responsible to do. And sometimes our skill set just sort of gets miscued. And we have that skill, but right now I just can't do it. Right now I just can't catch the ball. Right now my legs will only let me run so far. That's human nature. Mm -hmm. And until we mm -hmm. can forgive ourselves for that, okay, Oof. and understand it and say, okay, today I didn't get as far as I wanted. So let's look at that playbook again. What did I miss? And what can I add to it to make yes. tomorrow more successful in my mind? I really love a focus on beginning with forgiveness, Karen, for ourselves. Uh, I just, a oh, thousand percent, I just, I just agree, agree, agree. You know, we we tend so uh, so quickly to compare ourselves to either others who have gone further than we have or to a version of ourselves in our mind, a vision of what we want, and we just create condemnation, a, a self-judgment and you know, it, it crushes our esteem and our motivation and the negative self-talk and all those things. So yeah, you would think, you know, I work with some very intelligent, highly educated engineering leaders who are at, you know, director level and you know, very successful on paper, you would think, who struggle with this same reality. You know, oh, I'm not a vice president yet. It's like, what, how, how is that? You know, right, you think so silly, right? But the truth is that you mentioned it, it's part of our you know, maybe fall inside of human nature that we, we struggle with this. So love starting with forgiveness. And you made a good comment with this sports metaphor. I'll pull it a little bit further. The playbook is different than practice. You know, you, you talk about, oh, my legs could only carry me so far. Well, you may have the idea of running a certain play in your life, but you need to just go back and practice some more. You know, you don't perform the way Georgia did in, the, in a big game until you've really conditioned yourself. You've gone to the gym, you've run those miles, you've put in the practice, you've, you've caught a thousand passes in practice. And Karen, one thing that's really difficult in life is when we're in school, when we're young, you get a lot of time to study and learn and practice. Or if you think about sports and athletes, 90% of the time they're in practice and 10% of the time they're in the game. But you and I, we get thrown into life and you get your job and you, you have your family and you have, it's like, it's game day all the time. It is. When do we get to practice? You know, when do we have time to actually stop and practice? It's really, uh, it's an interesting question. Like, how am I setting aside time to actually practice the skills that I need to get to that next level? And it's one of the first things we need to do is say, hey, you mentioned forgiveness. I forgive myself for where I'm at. It's okay. It's not a judgment that here's where I am. And where will I carve out some space for myself? Be a little selfish with my own time and energy to do what I need to do to practice to get to the next level. Because it doesn't happen on its own. Well, and in practicing, we're going to make mistakes. Yes. And that's okay <laughs> because we're going to learn from them. Okay. I mean, I come from a generation where basically my parents, my teachers, uh, you made a mistake and you got swatted on the hand. It's like, didn't you read the chapter? 
didn't you memorize the spelling words? Didn't you do this? And it'd be like, well, I thought I did, but I don't retain in the same way. And that is where it took me a good majority of my life to say, wait a second, mm -hmm. I'm not stupid. Yes, I've made mistakes. Some of those I continue to make because, like you said, I haven't had the time to practice to make it better. Mm -hmm. But what's it going to take? Oh, five minutes of my day? I can make that one better. Yeah. But you yourself have to be the catalyst for all this. You can't wait for your boss, your parents, your children, the neighborhood committee to... Yeah get you on pace you've got to do it yourself so and karen i think what what's true in that statement too is you talked about failure you know, we've been conditioned to fear failing yes and my company name is oasis of courage for that exact reason and i talked to all these engineering and technology leaders you'd think they'd be you know so courageous and, and well, the truth is we all struggle with, with fear and we fear failure sometimes more than anything. And we just want to stay safe and comfortable. So I'll just encourage, you know, anyone, if you hear what Karen's saying, it's like, yes, it makes sense. But there's that immediate sense of reservation about stepping out of your comfort zone. You know, just recognize, hey, that's, that's human. But one of the things we need to strengthen in life is the courage to face Fear, the courage to get uncomfortable, because if you want to grow and, and see your life expand into something more beautiful, more full, you know, if that's more income, if that's a big change in your lifestyle, you know, if it's health, like you're going to face some fearful, uncomfortable things to get there because we don't grow by staying comfortable. So I really appreciate what you said there. Well, so your clients how do they find you because like you're talking about ceos executives that really think they've got it all together okay what is it that makes them like wake up in the morning and say you know what i need someone like zach to help get me back on track sure. i'm not doing it karen i think the short version of my story will help to answer this because it's part of what draws people to do work with Oasis of Courage and with me. Sure. I was on a really successful career track coming out of college in engineering. And like many people, I just wanted to be successful. I wanted to grow. I wanted the promotions, you know, some of the ego and the recognition and all the things that come with that. And I fell into that trap of pursuing what I thought was success, and you know, using air quotes here, by the world's definition, and you know, wanted the big paychecks and all those things. And what happened in my singular focus in pursuit of that is I failed to take action and pay attention to where my life was unraveling in other areas that are equally, if not far more important to what I value, my marriage, my health, my family, and my faith, you know, things that were sitting on the back burner crumbling but i was so singularly focused on my career that i didn't do anything about it and i burned out i i tell people it's like i scraped my face along the rock bottom of life you know it really was difficult i ended up divorced and depressed and embarrassed karen just like how did this happen you know i had all these things going for me and on the surface Everybody who knew me thought I had everything under control. You know, I was doing so well. And on the inside, I was completely broken and lost. Just how did I end up here? It was my recovery and healing and growth out of that rock bottom place where I fell in love with coaching and really mastered the tools and the ideas and everything that we're talking about today and ultimately left my career to start this company to help the engineering leaders you just mentioned who end up in this same place. So let's back up. Why do people find Oweco, my 
Oasis of Courage, my company, it's because they look like they've got it all together, right? Uh, they have the title and the paycheck and the, the beautiful, you know, three bedroom home in the suburbs and all this stuff, right? But there's more to the story of life than just career success. And frankly, they don't teach us how to be successful in our whole life in college. <laughs> and so there's usually one or two different things that can happen. Either somebody does really get stuck, they just don't know how to progress, or they burn out like you described and like I've experienced. And you know, they still have a job, they're still you know, gainfully employed, but they're very unhappy, they have no energy, and they just say like, I, I want to quit. You know, I wake up Monday morning and I dread going into work, even though I have this dream job. You know, many people would kill to have this job, but I hate my life. It's like my resume has everything on it that I said I wanted when I was coming out of school or a sure. decade ago, but I hate my life. And I think that's one of these unspoken um you know, almost pandemic like things in our culture is the number of people who on the surface look like they have it all together, but on the inside, they do not love themselves and the life that they're living. And they don't know how to reconcile the two because what else can they do? They already have the job, the paycheck, the spouse, the kids, the home, the, the car, the now what? And that's where they get stuck. And, you know, I'm hoping that our listeners hear this, think about it, go back and hear it again, um, because we've all been told, don't judge a book by its cover. And typically, like you said, an executive or someone who we think has made it, we sit around and we drool and we want to be just like them. But yet, the homeless person on the street, we judge them. We all know how they got there, of course, even though our story is totally different than theirs. Mm -hmm. And the reality of it is if we would just communicate with each other. And that's what podcasting has done for me and for my guests, where we can say, things may be looking perfect today. You know, I'm, I'm leading in the direction I want to go. But my perfection, my success is totally different than yours, Zach's. You know, I don't, when somebody will say to me, how many, how many listeners did you have today? You know, I'd have to open up the stats to look at it, but it doesn't make any difference. Yeah. Because if one person heard it, or if I heard it and I could make some positive changes, then I'm successful today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So these executives that you work with, um, and again, I'm thinking stereotype. Sure. They think they've made it. Like you said, they've got the house, the the family, everything else. But now they come to you and they say, I've got it, but I'm not sure I want it. Where do we start? Yeah. Is this it? <laughs> Surely there's more. Yeah. So the first thing, and, and you know, I'll encourage everyone again, you take this, it's not just for executives in engineering, right? This this sure. is for all of us, right where you're at in your life, this is true. If you have that same question, like, is this it? Or am I, I feel stuck, I, I want something else from life, I'm not sure what that looks like. So where do we begin? Karen, the first thing that I do with all my clients is actually a really fun, really simple exercise that I would encourage anyone listening to do if you want to kickstart some inertia in your life toward growth. and I encourage them to be a child again, to reconnect with the part of their soul that desires fun, exciting things. And so we take uh, a blank sheet of paper and we remake our bucket list. We put a 101 things down that we want 
from life. Things that you want to be. You know, maybe you want to be a mom or a dad and you, you don't have children yet. You want to be a parent. Uh, maybe you want to be an engineer. You know, you're, you're in school and you want to be an engineer one day or you want to be an astronaut or whatever. Yeah. And then things you want to do. You know, I want to, I want to do this. I want to go travel here. I want to race an Indy car on the Indianapolis 500 motor speedway track. I want to ride in a hot air balloon. And, and then what do you want to have? You know, I want to have the cool car. I want to have a house. I want to have this. And then what would you love to give? You know, let's say, what would be amazing if you could give? So I would, I'd love to give to this charity that I care about. I'd love to, you know, pay off my, my parents' mortgage because they did so much for me. I'd love to be able to give. Put these things down. We just, we make a bucket list of everything that you'd love. Because one of the things that needs to happen, Karen, if we're going to create big change in our life, is reconnect with the energy of desire. Because the one thing that cannot be coached is the intrinsic desire to move your life forward. You know, if one of my clients comes and says, Zach, I, I want more, I want change, I want growth, I want something different, but they don't have the desire to make that change, then it doesn't matter what coaching we provide them. There's no energy or fuel for growth without that initial burning desire to say it's worth going after something more. So make a bucket list, have fun with it and reconnect with that energy inside you that has a playful childlike anything is possible uh, spirit. And then notice as you make it, what kinds of thoughts are coming up? I don't deserve that. Oh, it's that's too big. That's I'm not allowed to like that's silly. Oh, that's this is this is childish. You know, I, that's something that's not important. Oh, you know, only only rich people do stuff like that. And you know, that's not me. I don't I don't want to turn into an arrogant rich person or or maybe, oh, that's you know, that's no, not important anymore. I only want it's really good to just notice where some of those self judgments or, or limiting beliefs start popping in and just take note of them. We don't need to do anything about them right now. They're not they're not true or false. They're not right or wrong. It's just thoughts. Then let's take stock of them. We can coach around those later. But that's the first thing I do with all my clients, Karen, is say, all right, before we worry about your career, before we worry about losing those 20 pounds, before we let's just be a kid again. And you go sit down and take however long it takes to come back with 101 things on your bucket list. And it's a really fun exercise and it can be challenging. Some people are like, oh, that'll be really easy. I'll sit down, I'll just write them all down. And after about 20 or 30 lines, they start, start to struggling. get like, yeah. wait a minute. Well, what else What else do I actually want? And you know, sometimes you have to encourage them. Hey, instead of just saying, I want to travel more, you know, let's get more specific. Where do you want to go? Let's put some some detailed things down. Maybe we can break that up into five or 10 ideas. And, Anyway, that's that's the first step, actually. Excuse me. Oh, no this, that's on my bucket list to get rid of this cough. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. And for those of you listening, no, I do not smoke. Uh, I've had the flu and leftover remnants. But it has as been I a was tough listening, flu season too, Karen. Yeah. As I was listening to you, Zach, um, this summer I took a positive intelligence course. And mm -hmm. now we are in the phase of um, maintenance. And while I was taking it, um, I was so focused at listening to the coach and the person who was rec who's recorded all the different exercises. In the beginning, I had to do it exactly that way. Oh, you know, I have to take five deep breaths. I've got to do this and that. and. Mm -hmm. Um, I found after week three, no, that doesn't fit me. Mm. I was getting the concept. I knew what, why I was supposed to rub my fingers together or why I was supposed to take 10 seconds to stare just into space and try to empty everything in my head. And I finally said on one of the sessions, you know, I don't think I'm doing this right. And the coach said, and I knew better, but I said it anyways. And the coach says to me in the group, is there any one way we're supposed to live our life? 
And all of a sudden, this light bulb went off. And it's like, you know, if I had thought about that when I was a teenager, when I was a young parent, my life would have been totally different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But now that I understand it, um, I'm not going to sit around and judge myself because I decided not to read chapter four. I just wasn't in the mood, didn't want to do it. I'll pick up on it when we have the group discussion. And I thought about these things. And if we can, like I said before, forgive ourselves, do it the way that makes you succeed. It's so much easier to get up in the morning, as tired as you might be, and say, oh, this is what I'm going to do today. Mm -hmm. But I was like you. I got to a point in corporate America that I'd lie in bed in the morning, and I was crying. I did not want to go to work. Yes. And it was my husband who finally said to me, what are you doing? You know, you're going to... You're going to kill our marriage. And this isn't about our marriage. It's about the job you go to. And I looked at him and I said, but I like my job. I don't like the culture. He said, but mm -hmm, you can't change mm -hmm. that. You've tried. Mm -hmm. So maybe you need to walk away. Karen, there's something really important you said. I want to highlight because it aligns exactly with the way that we coach our clients. And it's this idea of how school and engineers are the worst at this, by the way, where everything that we do is in the pursuit of the right answer. You know, we think about mathematics. Well, two plus two equals what? There's only one right answer, right? You spend your whole life learning how to get to the one right answer and, you know, solve the equation and, and balance the formula. and. We spend all this time learning the hard sciences where we're in the pursuit of something that is true and right, and this is the way to do it. And you know, maybe somebody comes from a more artistic or humanities background where there's some interpretation and there's some room for uh, putting your own color and energy to it. But in the end, you're still seeking to get that grade of an A from the professor that you've done the exercise right, that you've completed it the way you're supposed to. But life is full of really difficult situations and decisions where there is no one right answer and you made the comment like is there one path one way you're supposed to live what you should do and i tell my clients stop asking me what you should do and and it's in general a good rule to just don't should on yourselves <laughs> you know, i love that <laughs> phrase don't should on yourselves because who gets to decide only you get to decide so what i'm here to do is guide you to some frameworks or insights or things that have been successful before, give you ideas, expand what's within yourself, but there's only one right answer and that's your answer. And if it comes from Zach, then that's not what you want. It needs to come from you. And, and so coaching is all about helping someone to recognize it's not about blindly adopting a system or a methodology or an answer from Zach or Oasis of Courage or any of these other engineering leaders in their cohort. It's about learning to adapt and to be authentic and to own their own decisions. And when you can start to do that, you know, there's a whole freedom that comes with recognizing, oh wait, I don't need to find the one right answer. Like any answer I choose can be the right answer for me. And then circle back 20 minutes ago in our conversation that, oh, and if I fail, you know, what is failure? It's really just feedback. It's just an opportunity to learn. It's only failure if you stop learning and stop growing and exactly. stop moving. As long as you continue, it's just a temporary setback. It's feedback. It's an opportunity to grow. And in fact, we grow more from those setbacks than we do from our successes. So in a way, if you want to be successful, the pursuit of only success is not that path. It's, it's a good thing to experience some setback because that's going to help you grow even more. And if you're never bumping up against failure, then you're not actually pushing yourself to the edge. And 
So I think that's such a powerful thing to keep in mind as you think about life and 2023 goals and, and really leaning into what you want is once you've done that forgiveness work and you've set that vision in front of you, what you want to go create, then it's, it's really just about you pursuing that authentically uh, in a way that's only yours. No one else can tell you exactly what the right answer is. You are so right on the money there. Um, so tell our listeners how they can find you, um, you know, to find out if you're the right fit for them. Because uh, one of the things that I do through my podcasting is I've become a coach advocate. And for anybody who's listening, it means I don't do the coaching. But when you come to me and you say, you know, Karen, you say that you're moving through life, you're happier. What have you done to get there? And truthfully, it started out with counseling, which I had to tell my counselor after a year, I'm not getting where I need to be. And I loved her. I thought she was great. But I'd walk out of there and didn't feel like I had gained anything. In fact, I felt like I was losing bits and pieces of myself. Mm. And that's when I found a coach. And in the beginning, I kept saying, well, tell me what to do. Tell me what to do. And she looked at me and she goes, if I tell you what to do, you're going to end up living my life. Do you yes. want my life or your life? Yes. And no, I didn't want her life because I knew certain things about her life I didn't like. Um, and that's when it was like, now I understand coaching. I love mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. um, and I work with three different ones. So for our listeners out there, um, you know, you may say, hey, Zach's the one, but there may be another area of your life that needs to be tweaked differently and you find somebody else to help you out. A hundred percent. I love that, Karen. And I'm the same way with my clients, actually, people who've hired me for you know coaching support in their careers and life. A lot of times I'll tell my clients, hey, for that area, you need to go pursue a, a coach who has expertise in that area. You know, that's not what we're here to work on. And as your coach, I'm going to coach you to go hire another coach. You know, right. like that's what exactly. you need to do. Uh, and so to find me, you know, if you're in science, technology, engineering, mathematics, the STEM fields at any level, you know, we've we've used to you know, focus more on higher levels of career, but now we have clients from right out of college all the way through those executive levels. If you're in a professional career path in STEM, by all means, come come say hi and check it out. The best way is to just pop over to the Happy Engineer podcast. That's my show. It's the Happy Engineer. You can search wherever you're listening to this amazing show and you'll find it. Or if you are you know, want to visit us online, it's thehappyengineerpodcast.com. And all the information to connect with me directly and my team is there. So please feel free to reach out. And if you're not you know, somebody who resonates with Oasis of Courage or me, maybe you're not in engineering or technology careers, but you'd like to reach out anyway and say hi, or, or maybe to Karen's point, get a recommendation for another coach. Uh, coaches, no coaches. I've got hundreds of colleagues uh, in every domain of coaching and would be honored to do what I can to support you or point you in the right direction. So the Happy Engineer podcast, come say hi to me. I'd be absolutely honored to do that. And this will all be in the show notes. So if you didn't remember what those uh, URLs were, don't worry about it. Uh, we'll give it to you in the show notes. In fact, all you'll have to do is click on them. Um, because I know sometimes when we try to type something in and it takes us to the wrong <laughs> so site, true. we don't want that so to happen. True. Zach, I want to thank you so much for joining us. Um, I, I feel, I feel empowered today knowing mm. that wherever I choose my level to be at that moment in time, it's okay. I don't have to be at the pinnacle of my career if I don't want to be there yet or if I'm just not there yet. It's okay. Yeah. All you have to do is just take one step at a time. I yeah. love that. I love that. And Karen, that's the great equalizer of life. It doesn't matter if you're on the first step of the ladder or you're at the 100th step of whatever ladder it is we might be talking about. All of us have in common the same thing, that the next step 
is a courageous, bold action for you, just like it is for anyone else. And it doesn't matter where you're at on the journey. We all have a choice to make when we wake up in the morning to say, will I take my next step? And the fear that Zach White faces may look different from the fear that, that you face, but we're all in it together. So take that next step and enjoy the journey. All right. Well, I know I certainly will. And I want to thank you. We'll have you back again in the future. Um, I love it. And we'll talk about, you know, maybe some of the steps both of us have taken, which I think I would, would be great. It. I would love it. Karen, thank, thank you, you so very much. much. Bye bye now.